This is TJ with Tech Made Easy. Welcome to my channel. My channel is all about making things affordable, practical, and easy. And I'm always looking for a way to to, uh, to increase the efficiency of my NVMe enclosures. And it wasn't until recently that I could find 20 gigabit enclosures and a 20 gigabit PCI card to go with them. So my particular system that I test with is um, it only takes Gen 3 PCI slots and it has no Type C slots in there. And so. Um, and the reason why I do that is because because I test with this system and I'm testing different operating systems, I don't want to have to go in and take an NVMe out and then put another one in. And so I usually will just go ahead, I'll just go ahead and install the operating systems and run them from the NVMe enclosure, um, including Windows. And you can run Windows from a thumb drive, whether it's a regular thumb drive, an SSD using the USB or an NVMe enclosure like we're doing here. And if you want to interested in how to do that, I'm going to leave a link down below that will show you how to do that. That's how I'm running Windows 11 on this system to test to test these enclosures, is I'm actually running it from an NVMe enclosure. And so, any, at any rate, we've got three different options here. We've got a, a $40 option, a $30 option, and a $25 NVMe uh, enclosure option. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at the performance of these, see if there's that much of a difference, and what issues I may have ran into, which I did, and I will explain that um, as we go along. So um, now you might be wondering why do I want an external NVMe? Well simple. If you're a gamer you might be running out of drive space. Um, if you are a tester like me, you might want to test operating systems from an NVMe enclosure. Maybe you're doing video editing and you want fast access to your video files. Uh, there's just multiple reasons, and me personally too, whenever I build a server, I never use I never use an, in, an internal drive, I always use the USB. Now I don't use USB thumb drives, I use USB SSD hybrid drives. But these SSD hybrid drives, the way, they're, the way they make them now, the controllers, you can't boot from them. Um, it's really kind of disappointing. Now, uh, I'm talking, and I'm talking the SSD uh, hybrids. You can from a thumb drive, and so um, so I always boot my servers for either from an SSD that's using the thumb drive, uh, using the USB, or by now I just use just use NVMe's uh, to boot my servers with, um, and an enclosure. So lots of reasons why you may want an enclosure. Why well you may want one that's faster. Um, I don't want an NVMe enclosure that's only 10 gigabits per second when that drive does 35 reads and writes, or higher depending on what we have. Now I am going to be looking at 40 gig enclosure and a card, but the reason why I'm not doing that now is because they are way more expensive. Um, on the 20 gigabit side, they're actually pretty reasonable. So I'm going to be talking about what card you would need um, and then you know, help you decide what particular enclosure to get. And then later on I am going to test the 40 gig one. I found a used card and the pricing for the uh, uh, 40 gig enclosure is still around 60 bucks though, which is still expensive, but at any rate, let's go ahead Let's take a look at the performance of these these enclosures. Let's get started All right, so let's uh, talk a little bit how I tested this. So um, I, have, I have a testing workstation. It's an HPZ 440. Um, it's just one I use for uh, for testing. And by the way, this is an excellent. This is to me. This is the most first versatile workstation. That um, it's one of my favorites. Um, our whole family is using these. All of my kids, my wife, so on and so forth. One's Windows great. I mean, there's so many options. Um, and it even games well, so uh, so many options there. You can do video editing for that. You can make it this into a server. I mean, there's just all kind. This is such a versatile workstation. I, I love this workstation. Um, but at any rate, so this is HP Z440. The PCI slots are Gen 3. Um, it's older, so it doesn't have Gen 4, Gen 5. But we are running Windows 11 on here, and of course, the Windows 11 we're using the default NTFS format to test this. And then Linux Mint, Linux Mint default format is uh, ext4 now um, just so you know in Linux there are different formats and maybe one of the other formats like ButterFS or ZFS it might get a little bit better performance than uh, ext4 but this is what a lot of people are using so and it's what my default is so this is just what I tested it with now I did want to test it on Linux using NTFS so I'll show you the results of that as well 
but for the most part it's it's better obviously if I'm using the default operating systems format to test these so let's just go ahead and take a look at the pricings of these first these items these enclosures and what I needed to do because because the system is older it also doesn't have any type C ports and even if it did it doesn't have 20 or 40 gigabit uh, ports so let's just take a look at the enclosures and the card I bought and and go from there okay we're on my Linux desktop and that doesn't matter at this point I've already done the testing but I'm just gonna go to the browser so we can talk about the pricing of all these in the enclosure so the particular uh, NVMe drive I'm using is this Samsung 970 EFO plus and it's uh, rated at 33 read and write speeds a 3500 read I think 3300 write um, and so then what we do as far as enclosures go we got the save rent here uh, again it's 20 gigabit and it's, it's 39.99 so $40 then we have got our, our U green one and again uh, 30, 20 gigabit or 20 gigabit speed it's 29.99 so $30 then I found this other one I wanted to go a little I wanted to get to the least expensive one that I could get to so I found this one here and I don't even know how to say this name this Maui Maui whatever it is um, but it's uh, 24 uh, 29 so say 2450 for this now the one thing I do like about this they do have 40 gig options here that are that are decently priced the problem is when you get into 40 gig uh, NVMe enclosures um, if you don't have a system that already has Thunderbolt built into it the Thunderbolt um, PCI cards are usually around $100 or more and so um, and for what I do for my testing and that's just a little bit too much for me but if you're doing video editing you know that might be worth it to it but you can do video editing with this one again there's all kind there's all kinds of purposes that obviously that you can use uh, for this but for me I just wanted something that at least 20 gigabits per second uh, performance um, I wanted to get the, that performance out of these enclosures and not just limit it to 10 gigabit so let's just take a look at the card that I that I bought uh, for this because we'll need a PCI card and this is the uh, <clears throat> Sonnet Allegro um, it's 20 gigabits and and just so you know all of these were plug and play in both Windows and in Linux no problem at all uh, just install them boom Windows recognize it Linux recognize it uh, the drive the enclosures everything now one thing I will have to say here obviously I'm not doing Mac but these are compatible with Mac as well so um, let's just go ahead and go to Amazon here now one of the things that I will mention <clears throat> about those enclosures they do come with their own cables but again they're really short and I wanted at least a three foot cable because I want to be able to put the, the enclosure on top of my PC or at least next to it or something like that so and I, I wasn't sure if there would be any speed degradation uh, but there wasn't but I'm, I'm not sure about these other once you get into higher distances um, there can there can be speed de degradation I don't know you know is 10 foot the limit I don't know I haven't I haven't played around with that that much I'm not sure if you get anything longer than 3.3 if you're gonna lose any speed degradation or not um, but but there is another cable I bought too this one I didn't test yet um, I just want to see if there's any difference I'm sure there isn't any difference but because um, I have two systems that I want to use these enclosures on so let's just go ahead now oh before we look at the uh, the performance of these I do want to talk about oh, this drives me nuts I really wish that all of these were were toolless um, they are not toolless uh, the same right here it's got four screws that hold the back down I only put two on because if I want to get into it I want to do all undo all, all the screws now it is toolless then I believe inside it's toolless where it's held down by a, a little notch um, but I just I just wish all my other uh, NVMe enclosures they're all toolless it really bugs me that they're not toolish that that's my only complaint about all three of these now <clears throat> the saber is kind of cool you can you, you you see these lights here it does light up um, these colors rotate you can turn it off with that button right there um, if you if that bothers you but um, but at any rate um, the same goes with this one again this is not toolless uh, I believe inside it does have thing that holds the NVMe down but it has one screw that you have to unscrew to get into it um, and and the same with this one this one has two screws on the side that hold it in place and I just use one screw because if I want to get into it I want to do both I'm kind of a man out of convenience 
So that that's my biggest complaint about all these. I just wish they were 100% toolless. And actually, this one here, I believe you have to screw the NVMe down. Uh, there's no little small notch inside. But let's just take a look at the performance really quick. We're gonna do. We're gonna look at the Windows performance, and we'll look at the Linux performance. Now, one thing I do want to say here that's really important. Um, I, I ha at the end, I want to talk about the Sabrent because I had a little hiccup with the Sabrent. I don't know if it's that big a deal or not, but I just want to let you know what I ran into using the Sabrent enclosure. So, as far as Windows go, um, I'm just using uh, Crystal Mark, and and in Linux, Linux has another program that looks just like this one. It's called T uh, K Dismark, or this is sorry, this is Crystal Dismark. So it's we're so we're comparing apples to apples when we do this, and it's comparing the same sequences here: one megabyte uh, queuing up eight, and and I'm not even sure what all these do. I'm not I'm not like uh, into what all of those are are testing, but as far as the number, as far as the tests go, we're looking at apples to apples, and you'll have to excuse me because I thought these were done. Um, and that's why they say stop. They were they probably just had a few seconds left before I took an image of them So this this bottom number doesn't change though. They were they're just uh, just stopped um, But at any rate, so we got the saver right here and you'll see that we're getting our 20 gigabit transfer read and write rate And then if you're interested in these other numbers are right here, too and on the U green one again our performance uh, we're getting 20 gigabits and you can see there's a little bit of, of performance difference but it's for kind of more or less sixes now on the um on this wuon one or whatever it's called um uh we we got actually really good performance for only 25 dollars and so um so this one here i actually use this to run my linux desktop with it um but you but but for the most part we're pretty much sixes for them um now um, so let's go let's go to Linux and look at the Linux numbers unfortunately the Linux numbers are, are a little bit less but not a ton less so we have the saber right here and we can see what our uh, performance is doing here and we're still getting really basically close we're still at 20 gigabit transfer and read write speed for this first option and then you can take a look at the rest here one thing that is a little bit disappointing on the Linux side is that um, the, the second uh, criteria test here is uh, significantly lower, especially on the right side. Not so much on the read side, but on the right side, it is lower. Um, and that's throughout all of them. So we have our, our Sabrent here. We have our, our U Green results that are right here. And then we have our, our generic brand. Um, I don't know how to say that. And it's right here. And it actually performed, it, it performed really well. So as far as performance goes, there's not a lot of difference. It was a little disappointing on the Linux side to see that the, there was a little bit of performance lag there, but it's not huge. But 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 on the right speed though, there was especially on the second criteria. That's the one that had the biggest uh, difference because um, I think these are closer. Let's go back to the Windows one. Yeah, see these are all like 1600 uh, write speeds on that second criteria, and so. Uh, but but if you'll take a look at the third criteria, um, that's better on the Linux side. So yeah, I I I, I don't know what makes the difference, but, but my big thing was is I just wanted something fast that was 20 gigabit, regardless of those type of uh, discrepancies. So I do want to show one thing here. I did I did test uh, NTFS and this is the NTFS results. Well, not very good Linux. Again, Linux can read NT, um, NTFS formatted drives, uh, so it makes it really convenient. It can read uh, DOS drives, FAT32. So if you're sharing files back and forth with someone with Windows, it's really convenient because it does read that. But obviously, it's not very efficient at writing to NTFS. But if you're a Linux person, you're not going to be using NTFS uh, on, on something like that. Like especially for me where I'm using it as an operating system but even for sharing even for putting my files on if I was doing it I'd probably still format it as as a Linux format um, but you have that option that you you can do that with Linux you can format it as NTFS and it'll still read it FAT32 whatever 
So um, let's just go ahead. What I want to do is I want to go to this next screen because I want to talk about the Sabret for a minute. Because I ran into some issues with the Sabret. So when I first got these enclosures, I didn't I didn't run the t all four tests. I just did the top one because I just wanted to see that it was reading and writing at 20 um, megabytes per second. So um, so on the Sabret one, when I first did it, then obviously these are the results I got, and they were they were fine for me. Um, but then what happened when I went to run the test, and I've been running the Sabret, I've actually been running my Linux desktop from the Sabret for testing. When I went to first start and do all four passes with the Sabret, I was running into performance issues, and I don't know what caused this. Now those performance issues went away, but we're talking, let's take a look at like what I was seeing here. I mean, these kind of performance issues, 14, 91 for for read rate which is lower than the write rate and then sometimes this read rate was as low as 400 dot 400 megabytes per second and so i i was like what is going on so i don't know i don't i, I don't know why that happened but then i when i first started testing this i was using a uh, nvme that i just bought it's a really it was the cheapest one i could find it was a gigabit one and I didn't use that one because its performance is not quite as good as as the Samsung, but it was just getting terrible reads right. And I switched it out, and it didn't matter. And then all of a sudden, the Sabret started performing again. So I don't know where that glitch came from. I don't know if it was my Linux operating system glitching something out. Um, I I don't know. It was just a, it was really bizarre. Um, I don't. So I don't. I don't want to say anything bad about the save right because i i don't remember seeing that performance problem in windows when i was testing windows so um i just don't know why it will why when i started uh, again when i first bought it i just did this first top one and that's the way it, that's how it tested but when i ran all four that's when it started glitching out on me but again the final results if we go back here it wasn't glitching out anymore it was performing fine so i don't know what happened to cause it to really massively um, not read, not read right. Writing was fine. It was it was just having performance problems reading. Um, so again, I don't know what caused that because obviously my final test it worked. So the bottom line is is that um, obviously if you're really money conscious, you can get that uh, generic. I call it a generic brand because I don't know how to say the name of it. Um, for 25 bucks that's a great price for that enclosure um, I've had really good luck with it so far this is a great option if you if you want a, an NVMe enclosure again for video editing storing files whatever it is so this is TG with Tech Media Easy I hope that was helpful have a great day thanks now that was easy peasy